does it matter how you spend? Not just that you spend, not just that you acquire talent, but the way you acquire talent. Because the Cowboys will tell you it does. That we build through the draft, we sign our own, that's just it. Is that correct? Because there's a lot of people who push back and said, you got to dabble at least somewhat in free agency. Yeah, some people, I think Clarence Hill came on, he said, you got to bring out the salt shaker sometimes. You got you to gotta add. You got to add a little bit of seasoning here and there. RJ Choppy, for, for, for a couple years, has had me uh, against adding, and we just sit here and say no to everybody, but I've broken away from that. And it's time to add and time to sprinkle a little bit. Uh, because they're not good enough to win a Super Bowl as is. And that's why I've absolutely loved what they've done so far in two great value deals in Gilmore and Brandon Cooks. I like the value deals, too. I mean, there's 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 an easier way to, to become a great team. And that's just getting a quarterback, Sean. But we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> I don't want to do this. I don't wanna, full, what are you, do, what are you doing here, man? I don't want to do that during his segment. The full heel turn for RJ Choppy. I'm so proud. I'm so high five, proud. High five. High five. Yeah. Emphasis on heel. Oh, oh he, he slapped. He slapped it. He slapped me away with those hands. <laughs> so <laughs> when you look at, for instance, the Chiefs last year and how they built their team, because a lot of people say, hey, play in those waters at least a little bit, spend a little bit consistently. I think the only year where it wasn't the case was 2021. But over the last 12 years, every Super Bowl winner spent more money and guarantees on one free agent from outside the building than the Cowboys spent on their entire free agent class. What? Well, say that again. So every Super Bowl winner, other than the Rams, and the Rams made trades. They just yeah. didn't sign. They made trades, and they signed Odell Beckham Jr. for cheap. But every Super Bowl winner for the last, like, 12 years, other than the Rams in 2021, in that season they won the Super Bowl, they spent more in total guarantees on at least one outside free agent than the Cowboys spent on the entire free agent class that offseason. Wow. <laughs> so the Cowboys... Which, by the way, that only means that you had to sign just one guy. Basically. Like, you sign one good player, they're going to get more guarantees than the Cowboys have doled out. Right, because the Cowboys, the most the Cowboys have given out since the Brandon Carr deal in 2012. So since 2013 on, the most they've given out in guarantees in one offseason, I believe, was 2020. They gave out $30 million that year. And that's by far the most they've given out. Uh, it was actually $32 million. By the bye week, the Cowboys had cut 24 million of those guarantees. Wow. Cut or traded them. And so the one year they spent, it, it kind of went sideways. But spending money is one way to do it. I wonder if we just haven't talked enough about what the Cowboys are doing now, which is building your team through trades. There's this sense, this was a discussion point a little bit in Indy that you would hear. And I know Albert Breer has written about it recently. This idea that more teams are paying to keep their own, just like the Cowboys are. And because of that, it's watering down free agent classes. And guy, you're, you're not getting really big stud free agents anymore because teams are locking in their guys early, trying to, yeah. to adjust for the cap, make their savings. I, I wonder a little bit how much COVID had to do with that. When COVID threw off their cap projections for future years, if they said, man, we can't spend outside, we need to make sure we're retaining everybody here in house. And so in that process- the wide receiver, wide receiver market, at least right now, has been slow. Yeah. It's been a slow yeah. starter in free agency. Yeah. And and most, I'd say, if you were to compare the rumored available receivers for trade versus the receivers that are on the free agent market right now, you would take the trade class all day long in terms of just talent. You take Hopkins, Cooks, Judy, Sutton. You take all those guys over Juju Smith-Schuster. Odell. And, and the guys who are signing there. So, the Chiefs last year in 2022, they did not trade for anybody uh, they traded Tyree kill away mm -hmm. but they spent 40 million dollars in outside free agent guarantees which again is more than the Cowboys have spent in a decade so you look at that and go okay well that's an outlier we already know I told you they everybody spends more than the Cowboys do in their Super Bowl winners but how did the Super Bowl winners handle trades and real quick I know and I do it too mm -hmm. it is dangerous to bring any comparison to Kansas yes I, right. even though I do it it's still dangerous because they have they have the one guy there is those. You can make any mistake you want as a front office. Yep. As long as you have Patrick Mahomes and you don't trade him away, yeah, you're still going to win twelve. I dismissed these conversations more if it was the showing the Chiefs did not spend because you have Mahomes to make up for it. But this is about them spending. Yeah, and it's not just the They're Chiefs. They're in a better situation than us and spending. And it's not just the Chiefs. We're going to look at all the teams that have won the Super Bowl recently. Mm. So this is not. This is winners. This is the teams that win football games. Twenty twenty one. 
The Rams trade for Matthew Stafford before the season. They get almost 5,000 yards passing, 41 touchdowns, turn the ball over a lot. But they they got better performance out of him than they had gotten from Goff. Hall of Famer. Mm Mm-hmm. That's right. right mid season. <laughs> mid season, they then ante up again and they trade for Von Miller. And these, by the way, this is just addressing trades that were made the year they won, yeah. not even including the Ramsey deals and guys like that who came earlier. They trade for Von Miller the last 12 games, playoffs included. He has nine sacks in 12 games, really ups his game. For those two guys, the Rams give up two first rounders, a second rounder, and two third rounders. Really strong performance from a trade. 2020, Bucks obviously signed Tom Brady. They signed Leonard Fournette, all those guys. But they had also made a trade. They traded for the rights to Rob Gronkowski, who ended up with 14 yards per catch. He had nine touchdowns between the playoffs and the regular season. And he was a security blanket in Tom Brady's transition to the Buccaneers. Another trade. Pays off big time there. 2019, the Chiefs. We're bringing it back to the Chiefs again, who do have Patrick Mahomes. But who they also had is the guy that they traded for before the season started, Frank Clark. Frank Clark, between the playoffs and the regular season, played 17 games. He got 13 sacks. And in that three-game playoff stretch, he had five sacks in three playoff games. He was huge for them. He was absolutely critical to their playoff run. 2018 Patriots. They made several trades leading into that season and in the middle of that year. They traded for Trent Brown. He stabilized the left side of that offensive line. The team sacks dropped by 14 from year over year. So they'd given up 35 sacks the year before, went down to 21. Nate Solder, who had been the left tackle there the year before, had given up four sacks in the first four weeks of 2017. In 2018, Trent Brown, who they traded for, gave up three sacks all year, including the playoffs. They traded for Jason McCourty before the season. He was really strong in coverage all year. The stats weren't gaudy. I think he had one interception, but he was pretty locked down for them. And when you couple that with Stephon Gilmore, who he was... Not as good as Gilmore, but he was pretty close. And that made it really difficult to throw on the Patriots. That's why a high-flying Sean McVay offense went in there and scored three points in the Super Bowl is because McCourty and Gilmore were that good. Middle of the year, they trade for Josh Gordon, who Gordon got suspended right before the playoffs. But it's a deal they went after. Brady, who, Chop, you know, 2018, was Brady pushing the ball downfield a lot? He, he has basically done quite a bit. 2018, was he push it? Was he just chucking it all over the yard for 40 no, yards? Probably no. not chucking it all over the yard. No. no. Josh Gordon comes in there, has 40 catches on the year, averages 18 yards per reception with Tom Brady. Shows you that he was stretching the field vertically in a way that they hadn't been able to experience before. 2017, move back. The Eagles win the Super Bowl that year. Before the season, they traded for Timmy Jernigan. They had had issues with their run defense in 2016. They ranked 16th in yards per attempt allowed. Jernigan was one of the best run defenders in football that year, defensive tackle. And they went from 16th in 2016 to 6th in 2017. Middle of the year, they recognized some vulnerabilities in their pass coverage. They trade for Ronald Darby from the Bills. Ronald Darby in the final eight games of the season gets three interceptions. Almost led the team for the year playing in eight games. And he had six pass breakups in the three playoff games. Was really, really good for them. One more, we can just go back. This could go back far forever but just one more 2016 Patriots make a trade for Martellus Bennett who Rob Gronkowski some of the injuries starting to pile up some of the availability questions Martellus Bennett comes in has to step in and play a lot when Gronkowski gets hurt in the second half of the season he ends the season with 55 receptions seven touchdowns had five touch or five catches for 60 yards in the AFC title game another five for 60 in the Super Bowl against Atlanta so what you're seeing here is I know people have complained before about the Cowboys and Are they spending enough in free agency? Are they doing enough to acquire talent? Maybe the key here, because this is every Super Bowl winner, we're talking about them making trades. And the Cowboys have not consistently dabbled in the trade market. Probably even less so at times than they've spent in free agency. And it's, is trading the way to go? Find guys who are disgruntled or who there are issues with, give up some capital so that a team is willing to part with a better football player. Because just think about in recent history, some of the trades the Cowboys have made. Who are some of the ones that stand out? Robert Quinn. You traded for Robert Quinn. You bought low on him. He played really well for you. You traded for Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper came in here and totally reversed your season in 2018. And so maybe this is the avenue. Maybe that's what the Cowboys are showing here with two trades now this week for really good value pieces that they recognize. Look, do we want to play in the free agent waters? Do we want to give out a bunch of guaranteed money? No. But what if we evaluate a player who we say is good, is under contract, and we just are willing to trade capital for a sure thing. 
You know, my my issue here is if you look at all these teams. Mm -hmm. Now, like, you know, Kansas City this year, they sold their biggest guy, right? They sold Tyreek Hill. So, like, I do we even count them as spenders? I still would because, again, they didn't dabble in the trade market, but they did spend. Okay. They saw it, they spent $40 million guarantees. They brought in Justin Reed, Carlos Dunlop. They brought in Juju Smith-Schuster. Marquez Valdez-Scantley got $15 million guaranteed from them. So, they did Traded spend. Traded for Kadarius. Th Yes, the, middle the of the season. One issue, Darius, Tony. The one issue is all these teams that you mentioned. Yep. With the exception of the Rams and the Eagles, mm -hmm. they were all quarterbacked by Brady or Mahomes. Right. And those two teams, the Rams and the Eagles, either one missed the playoffs at the Rams or two had a rebuild shortly after because they had to. And I would say this. I, and, and, and like, so you're selling your soul for, for the one run. Um,. Would you have traded? Would 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 you trade places with the Rams right now? Absolutely not. With the ring? No. No. Although, hang on a second. Although, hang on. With a second. the ring, the Rams have been over the last six years, basically since you know since 2016. Well, they, they that was the golf and Dak 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 draft 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So since the since the draft, the Rams have been a better program. I call them program. They've been a well, better And franchise. that's the thing. Everybody talks about them as F them picks. Like, yeah. that's their reputation. They became perennial contenders through their team building through the draft. Right. That's how they became contenders. Yeah. Even the year they won the Super Bowl, who were the two best players on the team? Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup. Two guys they yeah. drafted. Yeah. So, like, would I trade places with the with the Rams? No, because, I mean, would you rather make the playoffs every year for 10 straight years or make the playoffs once, win the Super Bowl, but miss the other nine. I mean, right now, oh, in a 27-year drought, people would probably say the Super Bowl. Yeah. They're not going to miss. I mean, they might miss nine. They but might miss now because also, they're so they're so. Uh, but you can uh, rebuild thin. in the league, too. You can, yes. Like, they're still going into this year with Stafford, Cup, Donald. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, if you, no, if you go in. Like, I don't think Stafford, I think Stafford's arm is going to fall off. But if it doesn't, like, they're like, not. Yeah. Eliminated, like obviously, if you go and, and you know what's going to happen, if you go back and use hindsight, yeah, you obviously take the title. But that Rams title was kind of fluky. They were a four seed going in. They, you know, there was an upset where they didn't have to go. Uh, what was it? I guess they didn't have to go to Green Bay for the NFC Championship game. They got to play a home game against San Francisco. Like there were, and, and they got lucky in that game too. Like there's a lot of flukes to that. I will say where the margins are small in the playoffs because these are not when you bring up the Brady Mahomes point. These are not just running rough shot over everybody into the playoffs. Where the margins are small, I think Von Miller getting you nine sacks in twelve games matters for the margins. Even Frank Clark with Mahomes being what he was, Frank Clark picking up five sacks in three playoff games, including two in that Super Bowl where they had to come back against the 49ers. That matters, even though you had Mahomes.